Okay, so today we're going to look at what we call optimization. And optimization is looking for sort of the best scenario. Today we're going to look at two dimensions only, so dealing with perimeter and dealing with area. So here's our first scenario. A farmer has 40 meters of fencing available and wishes to make a four-sided pig pen. What size pig pen should she make to give her pigs the largest possible area? Right, so we're looking for this optimal situation that gives the largest possible area. So we can look at a number of different possible dimensions, and this table will summarize them, but just so you can get a visual of them. Suppose we say that the width is 2, okay, knowing that we have to have a perimeter of 40, since it's 40 meters of fencing, this would obviously be 2, and then we can figure out that this would have to be 18, and this would have to be 18, right? That gives us 36 plus 2 plus 2 is 40. So just to give you an idea of how we fill in this table, so the length here would be 18. Okay, let's look at another option, okay? So here we could look a width of, let's say, something like 12. So that means this would be 12, so that's 24. And then we would have 8 and 8, and that would give us a perimeter of 40. So there's lots of different options. You can draw them out if you need to draw out all of the different options to figure out the table. Um, Obviously, the looking at it for length and width is just a matter of perspective. It doesn't actually matter which one's which, but it just sort of lays out all of the different options here. So if we take a look at all of the options, this one's kind of unrealistic, but obviously if we had a width of zero, we'd just put two fences that are 20 meters in length across. Okay, and we can continue on. We'd have a 4 by 16 one. We'd have a 6 by 14 option, we would have an 8 by 12 option, and obviously that could be the other way around as well. Um, we would have a 10 by 10 option, we would, and continue on. So here we have the whole table filled in, and now we can look at calculating the area. So to calculate the area of a rectangle, obviously it's just width times length. So we will start to fill in 20 times 0 would obviously give us an area of 0. Okay, 2 times 18 would give us an area of 36 meters squared. 4 times 16 would give us an area of 64 meters squared. And I'll finish off the table. Okay, so looking at this relationship now, we can notice a few things, okay? The first thing is we can tell right away that if we were going to create a scatter plot of the area versus the width, or even the versus the length, it's not really any different, but let's say we were going to plot a scatter plot of the width and the area, would it be linear? Well, we can tell that it wouldn't be linear because if we did the first differences in this column right over here, we would see that the first differences aren't the same and therefore it would not be a linear relationship, okay? So if we create that scatter plot, I want you to have a look. You can see it back here as well, right here, that, that the 100 is our largest possible area is what it would look like, okay? Again, we have our width over here by our area, okay? And it's definitely not linear as we predict it, predicted. And we could actually draw a curve of best fit, which you can see I already drew on. Now, using both the table and this scatter plot, we can see that the best or best situation or optimal situation in this case is the largest possible area. And of course you can think about why do we want the largest possible area. We would want the largest possible area so that the pigs have more space to run around and we can see that that occurs right up here. An area of 100, you can see it back in and so the optimal scenario is the one where it is actually a 10 by 10 meter rectangle, but it's actually not a rectangle, it's actually a square, okay? So what we notice about these dimensions is that it's actually, sorry, it's actually a 10 meter by 10 meter square. And that is no coincidence, that will always be the optimal situation that will give us the largest possible area. Okay, so then the question becomes, well, could this farmer maximize the area further by creating a circular pig pen from 40 meters of fencing? So I want to take a look then at what we would do if we were looking with a circle. Okay, so again, 40 meters of fencing would be available, and that's dealing with the perimeter. In a circular case, that's actually the circumference. So now I want to look at it a little bit more algebraically with our formula. For, so our formula for the circumference of a circle is 2 pi r. As you've seen before, we know that the circumference is that. 
So let's solve for the radius and see what we get. So of course, using opposite operations, we would take our 40 and we would divide it by 2 pi. Okay, you would need to use brackets there for your 2 pi, or you need to punch it in as 40 divided by 2 divided by pi. Make sure you test this out and try this with your calculator, and make sure you can get the same answer as me. When I punch that in, I get 6.366, okay, and of course that would be in meters. And then I want to know here, what's the area then? Is that area better and bigger than the 10 by 10 square? So then I can find out the area of this circle is pi r squared. Okay, and I kept lots of decimal points just to make it as accurate as possible. So if I take my 6.366 and I square it or keep the number in my calculator, I actually get an area of 127.3 meters squared. And of course you can see then that this area is actually larger than the square because the area for the square was actually a hundred, right? The area here was 10 squared which was actually 100 meters squared. So a circular pen actually does optimize it even further and make it an even better. Now, would you choose to have a circle for your pen? Probably pretty unconventional. You don't see that very often. Um, so a square might still be our better option. Um, would make the most sense in that case. But you can actually maximize the area further by choosing a square. Okay, so now another scenario, um, similar idea but sort of what I'm going to call the opposite scenario. We have another farmer and he needs to fence a given area, an area of 225 meters squared and he to contain a few of his pigs on his farm, but he wants to use the least amount of fencing possible. And again, this is called optimization because I'm actually trying to minimize perimeter. Okay, and why would I want to minimize perimeter? Of course, that would decrease my cost, right? If I don't have to buy as much fencing, then my cost would be less. Okay, so we're going to figure out some possible dimensions for these rectangles that all have an area of 225 meters squared. Okay, so notice I've given you some specific widths. Obviously, we could do any width, but I've actually chosen factors of 225 to make the numbers for the width and the length nice whole numbers. Again, we're thinking about our rectangles. So here I'm giving you an example of, let's say we have a width of 5, what would the length have to be so that we would get an area of 225? So obviously I would take 225 and I would divide it by 5 and I would get the number 45. I just picked that one because those were nice numbers. Okay, and then think about if this was 45, what's the perimeter of this thing? Well, I have 45 plus 45 is 90, plus 5 plus 5, so the perimeter is a hundred meters. Okay, so, we, so I'm just going to go ahead and fill in the rest of the table. You can do the math on your own to make sure that you understand where I'm getting all these numbers from. Okay, always a good idea too to pause the video if you're not sure about these numbers and make sure you do try that on your own. Okay, so again I'm going to do the similar thing that I did in the other scenario and that is I do want to create a scatter plot here of the width and the perimeter and I want to know is it going to be linear, what do we notice, all those types of things. So right away again I'm going to look at if I was to calculate the first differences here it looks like it would be non-linear. So let's go ahead and let scatter plot looks like here. Here's our scatter plot of perimeter versus width. Okay, and you'll notice again a curve of best fit makes sense. It kind of looks like actually a little Nike symbol there. But again, we're looking for which what are the dimensions of the shape that uses the least amount of fencing, so the lowest perimeter. And notice that one's down here. Okay, and again, you should notice that these dimensions happen to be the square. Like I said, this is no coincidence. The square will always be the best for the scenario that you're looking at. And again, these dimensions are 15 meters by 15 meters. And I want to just take this opportunity to make sure you recognize that a square, although it's just a special rectangle, it does have its own special formulas. And you might have seen these before. For the perimeter of a square, yeah, we can add up all the signs, but it's actually just four times the side. And the area, yeah, it's length times width, but if the sides are the same, we often write that as side squared, right? Whatever the side is squared. It doesn't have to be an S, but that's what's sort of generally used. Okay, and just like we did earlier on, I want to take a look at, hmm, could I actually minimize the amount of fencing further, 
okay, for an area of 225 by creating a circular pig pen. And if you've caught onto the pattern, you probably can. Again, would you want to create a circular pen? It's probably not very often used, but it is possible. And I want to show you that math work again so that you can see what this looks like. So notice here in this one, I am given an area. So I'm going to start with my area formula for a circle. Okay, and I know that the area is 225. And I'm going to use that to actually solve for what would the radius be in this case. So that equals r squared, 225 divided by pi. So then I can actually find r by doing the square root of 225 divided by pi. Okay, and you punch that into your calculator and see if you get the same as me. I get a number like 8.46. We'll stop there for your dimensions. So that would be the dimensions of a circle to minimize the amount of fencing. Okay, and again, I'm going to take that just a little bit further. Okay, and let's see if that actually does give me less fencing than was used for the square. Right, And so to remind you just up here for the square, if it's a 15 by 15 square, then the perimeter is 60 meters of fencing that would be used. So let's see what happens when we actually do the circumference of a circle. Okay, so if I just plug in 2 times pi times my radius that I got, which is 8.46, okay, I actually get 53 um, point 0.2, I believe, meters of fencing, which of course, again, is less than the square, okay? So if we are looking at optimal dimensions in 2D, looking at rectangular pens or rectangular anything, a square is better than any kind of other rectangle, and a circle is actually even better, okay? And that's the main idea that we want to make sure that we understand for today.